Yeah. I'll get it. So, so, so let's, so let's, Beth, so that, Beth, that was... you just, just need to tell, uh, tell Brian to drink and he'll have to, it's, it's a rule. So if it, let's make this kind of a turbo round one, because we're, we're coming up on uh, an hour or a little bit over now, I guess. And yeah. I'd like, you, hey, Anna. I'd like hey, to... Loki Anna. Grimm. She hey, was Anna. first Ooh. guinea pig. She got to watch the oh, Beth. really. On, I thought we were friends. <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to turn this a little bit to the left and say, you know, we talked earlier about, uh, you know, the kinds of campaigns we like to run, so on and so forth. So I'm going to kind of skip ahead to an idea that we have about rules. What? Go ahead, Matt. Uh, Brian, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, we got another shout out. Anna Meyer, the famed cartographer. Hey, is, is Anna Meyer, how are you? So everybody, say hi to Anna. Uh, hey, Anna. Uh... Hey, and you know, I wonder, is this, do these people eventually become friends of the show? I mean, how does that happen? How do you get that? They're already friends of the show. Friends of the show? They're already friends of the show. Okay. Friends of the show. Friend of the show, Anna Meyer. Uh, So (laughs) rule books, right? We all talked a little bit about the games that we like to run and the systems that we like to run. So just kind of turbo round here. What in your preferred game system, what's your favorite book? The book you gotta have. And let's just skip over DMGs or players' handbooks or monster manual. Like though though whatever system you play, those books don't count. Man, what's that's a the rule. other must have? Mm. What do you what do you put on the table when you start running the session? Because you know you're gonna need it. Ooh. Ooh. Not it. Okay. okay. We'll, all right. You so, go first. I can um, yeah, I can always go first, but I want to give you guys the opportunity. I think he already I said, that. He said about cities this. earlier. He said c- cities from Judges Guild. No, that's not my go to. My my go to that's for beginning game, but yeah, yeah. All right. If I was running Pathfinder, which is probably still in my top ten of all games of all time, um, I would say Laying Waste, and that is our critical hit source book um, because it makes critical hits more flavorful and less about numbers um, and it adds to the role playing. So that's, that's probably one of my more go-to ad books. If that helps. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Well, so that was going to be the second part of my question. What game outside of your system do you have to have? So it can be either one. It can be an in, like some people I know say they got to have Xanatar's guide there because there's stuff in it, right. That they're going to use uh, versus like something outside of system. What about you, Matt? What's your, like, what's your book, your go-to book? Yeah. I've been trying to, trying to, push the question off because i don't think i have one what about you jimmy what What book oh uh well i'm virtual so i've got them all open up so (laughs) so, yeah Mm -hmm. so i have you know what i'm saying jimmy i'm saying like the one you think is like man i could always look stuff up in this outside of the you're talking about out of the side of the core three yeah, Oops. sure. Yeah, I mean, so uh, I'm looking at them all on my shelf over there. So um, any of the next two, the elemental, uh, the, the 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 books, I've, I have them all open. I'm sorry that I'm gonna hate. You're gonna hate the question. No, the it's perfectly reasonable. Because you're virtual. They're virtual, and to share the the part of the fantasy grounds and the ultimate license and why I did it is I buy it all, and then my players don't. It doesn't cost them a dime. To play in the game, yeah, I shared all. I'm with, uh, yeah. I am with DM Fat folks, so uh, Fiend Folio is good. Ultimate Campaign also very good. Anna, yep, yep. I think yep. there's some there's some, there's some goodness uh, in those. Anything that for me, anything that's going to reference play style versus mechanics is is, is good. Uh, but I, don't have, I can't think of any one particular one that I'm like, oh, I got to have that when I'm going to start this game. Okay, I have a round two when you guys are ready. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my, my book, uh, I'm going to pick two because I'm the MC. So I get to pick two. Uh, one is this book right here, which all of my player, you can't, you won't be able to read it, but this is a book called the Afanian helps. The Afanian helps. This was written by my first GM ever. Hmm. And oh, it, wow, is, yeah. it is from 1979 and there's a lot of cool stuff in it, but the main the thing matrix is, printer right there is the crit tables are ridiculously off the hook, uh, nearly pornographic in the violence. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, they are terrible. And anytime, 
any I swear to God, anytime anybody rolls a 20 or a one in my game, D, DM fat folks can say, you can tell you right there. Uh, I'm like, you want me to roll from the book from the Afanians? And they're like, Nobody can ever resist saying yes, but all of them fear it. One <laughs> is uh, Jim Pinto's. Uh Uh-oh, got a shout out. Uh, that book you have, Brian, The Toolbox. Oh, my second one? Oh the-, oh, the Toolbox, yeah, yeah. The Toolbox, because when I need a name, when I need a marital status, when I need a poison type, when I need a type of snake that might find you after midnight on the plains of Gonzal, it has all of those. There's a table for that. So, uh, okay. And speaking of toolboxes, Jim Pinto will be on our show. So. <laughs> That's for you, Jimmy. Yeah, I got the drums. I got the drum stairs new. So. Hey, I'm with C. A. Wright. Tome of Adventure Design is a dope book. Mm-hmm. That's a really uh, yeah, dope yeah. book. Yep. Oh, okay, so I'm getting excited over here. Round two. Round two. Go hey, ahead, Bryce. Go easy, ahead, fella. Um, all right, so my second book that I really love to throw at any game system, but specifically like D&D-ish games, you know, Pathfinder, D&D, whatever, a little, maybe even slightly unknown um, system called The Primal Order. Oh. And the Primal Order is Wizards of the Coast's first product. So um, it is a massive like overlay, like a rules module that just slaps on top on top of your game and it makes gods gods. They are not just things with armor classes that you know high level characters <laughs> license and dice. No, they're like I blend I snap my fingers and I can create planes of existence. I can wipe out planes of existence. Mortals are nothing. So very cool book. That I do I, not I know a lot of books, but I've never heard of that book, and I'm super excited to know more about that, Brian. Yeah, and I got to say, I, it, that was one of the more disappointing things about, uh, I think, Monster Manual 2, Fiend Folio, uh, a couple of the later on books, and the original uh, original D&D, AD&D world was that they started giving stats to gods. And you're like, ah, Bast, really? I Ra has has an armor class of 20. I can go kill Ra? That's, that's great. Right. That's, yeah, yeah, that was we, always that was always kind of disappointing. We we just in my current game right now it's it involves dragons and you know I never want to do the same thing twice and I never want to do something that uh, somebody else is doing. So obviously when I started this I didn't want to have dragons that you could fight. So my dragons are like celestial entities. You know they don't have stats. Right. They, have thing, they have things they can do, sort of like fourth edition lair actions. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Which, which we should do a show on fourth edition because that that edition gets slagged off a ton but there are genuinely brilliant things in that in that system and no shit there. yeah there's some good nuggets in there yeah, yeah because it was designed yeah. by the same people who designed all these other versions you know they're not stupid they were just trying to design something different and to the extent that it failed was probably more of a public perception and, and backlash issue rather than the fact that it wasn't any good because it was actually pretty good. Well, I think Steven's already logged off, but uh, one of the big one of the biggest things that I carry over to any game, the minions concept, like the whole uh, the one hit point dudes, the guys that you can kill with one hit. It's all it all turns into action economy there, mm-hmm. and I love I love that. So so since we're on the topic of talking about rules. What? Let's oh, wait, start sorry. with. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matt. So we have approximately fifteen minutes until we are going to announce the winners <gasps> of our. Um, oh yes. Uh, Mortar Cannon's Tome of Foes Special Edition. The swag. We, we have we have two mugs to give away oh. and a T-shirt. We're going to announce those yeah. here in about fifteen minutes. Right as the show. Well, now maybe minutes. ten. Five minutes. Ten. Before. Let's yeah. let's say let's say ten. Ten yeah. minutes. Ten. Minutes. So, so much we have a whole bunch of topics that we didn't bother to cover. So <laughs> and we knew we weren't. We no, but here, but so 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 getting back onto our rules topic. What I mean, I don't really care if we don't get through all the topics. Is there anything you absolutely want to get through, Bry? So because we could turn because session zero sometimes takes two sessions. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about player empowerment. Yeah. Good. All right. One of the things that I love to do is when I'm running a game is to be lazy. Yes. I want to do as <laughs> wow. little as possible yep. when I'm running a game. Because seriously, I want to tell a story. 
and although I'm, I'm being facetious here, I don't want to spend all my time looking up rules. So I want to be able to run the story, let the players run the game. Okay. And so some of the things that I do is I hand yep. off initiative. Um, I have a hand off someone else, keeping track of all the loot. Um, you, you know, and so much of the, uh, the things that the GM does doesn't necessarily have to be done by the game master. Um, empower those players. And one of the things that you might find is if suddenly you were doing less and you're concentrating more on the story, obviously you're going to do a better job of it. But also if the players are concentrating on certain aspects of the game, well, guess what? Maybe they are more engaged now too. Um, and you'll find that your whole game becomes better because of it. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think that's, I think that's valid for sure. I mean, you, you have, um, uh, we have for a decade uh, off shot or offloaded loot, uh, mm -hmm. loot tracking to a player. Uh, I, I agree with you for sure on, uh, on histories and backgrounds, making sure that the players are tracking that information. Um, and, and to Danny's point earlier, if the players are driving the story, it can, I mean, you can completely go off script and just answer what they're talking about versus, you know, really worrying about the text box at all. Yeah, for real. What, what about you, Jimmy? How do you feel about like, like that stuff? Oh, how do you feel about that? Mm. Um, well, I, I, I'm trying to answer. I, I keep hate, I, I hate to keep answering in the, digital and the virtual side you're that guy answer you know, that way that, that's know. why you're here technical yeah. expert <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm here i know we're trained but i'm watching it thank chuck we got babunski bringing a raid over from his channel so what up chuck chuck, what up, chuck? chuck? Good to see ya. up chuck yeah Hi, I'm chuck. Gonna, i'll see him i try to keep plugging but we'll see each other i think we're going to be on lord gosumba's gosumba's channel mon sunday night to chat about two e stuff and show them some fantasy grounds. So sh show them two some old e Thetas and stuff. Yeah, Grognard, some old, uh, uh, some new technologies and all that. So are you gonna are you, are you talking Thaco? Uh, I we're I'm not gonna I'm gonna let uh, one of uh, who's Chuck who is it's gonna be it's one of the actually fantasy grounds that's gonna come <laughs> over and show them. Deal. We're just gonna show them some, some how we use it. Uh, and we're good because I'm going to try to talk them in. They, I know they've run 5e on their channel. Show, anyway, show, them, show, show yeah. them the chart. I'm just yeah. going to show them a the chart. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's right. Uh, so I'm going to put it here. But, I, but we, we show screens. We don't show a chart in a, you know, a camera. You know better. Uh, anyway, so what was the I'm, what we what's the question again? It's too so, late. The, the yeah, moment's the I'm moment's gone past it now. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we'll that, we, we've over. Yeah, yeah I, you know, as far as as far as player as far as player engagement, you know, I think that uh, when when you when you make, when you make no what. What did I miss? Heck no, it's on chat. Heck no, and a boy Jake, Jake Bacon wins wins the internet. Heck no. <laughs> so good. Sorry, sorry guys, I couldn't. Uh, okay, I need a I need a reset here. What were we talking about? Player engagement. I, and I just went right past it. So we yeah. So there's there's always a task in virtual to engage the player, and if you haven't caught them in the storyline and the gameplay. I, bringing them back around is damn near impossible, uh, in my right. opinion, especially on the, online. You guys can do it at the table a lot easier, but online it's definitely more difficult. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. So, sure. <clears throat> yeah, I I don't I I guess I find that uh, for me it's a matter of keeping all my player types happy. So like. I, you know, we have people, I'm starting to really get away from saying min max or in those pejorative terms. I think, I think people that, that, that tend toward that, I, I, I kind of refer to them as mathematicians. Uh, they just are interested in the underlying systems. They want to make things make sense. And they hate when I say things like it's magic, not physics. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and it's so hard to get around that because we describe the fireball occupying a space and it acts like fire. But I have to remind people constantly, it's not fire. It's a magical thing that burns you that looks like fire, but it's not fire. Fire is the thing over there in the fire pit. This is some crazy freaking weird stuff. So, um, 
it's really sometimes challenging to engage those people at the Especially same time as you're as you're engaging people who are like really into the story and really yeah. want that next interesting clue. And I find yeah. that a couple of things help. One, uh, you, somebody said about giving the players uh, the initiative, letting them run the initiative. We made this. This keeps track. And I give it to my players to run because then that guy who kind of wants to tell everybody what they should be doing and mm -hmm. when, this is his prop. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the, I'm like, I'm handing over the, the, the mantle to you. Go ahead, do what you want with it. And we also sometimes hand out camp roles. So when they're on the road, somebody negotiates for food, lodging, all that kind of stuff. They have a skill for it. They can, you know, we know what that's going to be. Someone's the cook, someone's the guard, somebody's the da da da, da. It gives uh, opportunities for people to play a role outside of I am the fighter. You know, maybe, maybe I've had player characters who said, I sing a ballad every night before bed. Like I pull out my lute and I play, I'm not a bard. I just happen to be able to play and that's what I do every night. And so I give like a bonus. Everybody gets one more hit point for sleeping or whatever. And it gives every, some, everybody some little thing to do. So that's how I kind of deal with player engagement. Beautiful. All right, so we're at the, we're at the five minutes till mark. Until Let's give some prizes away. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So it, it, I, I hey, think, these guys I have earned it. it. Yeah, and thanks to everybody who joined us in chat. Cheers, Thank you all for our first session. Yep. You guys, you guys I think, deserve I think, it. I think we're, I think we're at our, I think we're at our question, right? So the the uh, the winner question of the oh oh god, I have to look that back up. Morning Canaan's uh, Tome of Foes Special Edition, Collector's Edition Special. Yeah, you, special. Matt, do you have the question open? Why don't you? I do. It? I've got it. Yeah, I've got yeah, it. Right go now. ahead. You do it. So uh, uh, this goes out to, I'm not going to say who it is. I'm going to read the question first, and then we'll talk about this the winner. goes out and to the one I love. My homies. My, my, no. Um, uh, relating to other questions regarding terrain and miniatures. Theater of the mind or minis and map. Why do you take your players into consideration when making these decisions? So do you, uh, are you a theater of the mind or are you a minis and map guy? Jimmy. Uh, I will be honest at the beginning of this channel. It was always about maps because it's easier to play it that way. Uh, and engage everybody because you know most of the time it was murder hobos you're dealing with and that's how they're playing. I will say that with the Waterdeep heist, Dragon Heist, which I have been a huge fan of and I'm going to run it uh, for the channel, um, the theater, the mind, and not worried about the maps and engaging is because of the way it's written. I am in love with it and I'm and so I am now finding that equilibrium between the two. So, <clears throat> Brian. Okay. Wow. Um, I, I could actually talk a little while about this. So does anybody else want to jump in first? Yeah. Apparently he has a big answer. I do both. And uh, I do more than both. I, I, some nights, if it's going to, I can just sense what kind of story it's going to be. It's uh, theater of the mind is always my go-to. I use a whiteboard where it doesn't really matter if people are positioned very particularly. And then when it matters, if people are like, Three weeks ago, we ended on a crescendo where like the evil sorcerer came out of the cave and we stopped right there. So next week, I bowled out all my Dwarven Forge and I built a huge yeah. cavern system on my table because I knew the next week was going to be primarily that. And then I also have a screen that I can project a virtual map onto. So I use, honestly, uh, DM fat folks will back me up. We use all four of those interchangeably at any given time. Uh, so I would say uh, I'm, I think I'm in the Danny camp in that uh, if I'm going to game something and I know that it doesn't, we can accomplish this without going to the map and going to minis, then I'm going to do that. I've, I've got, I've got it in my head and I feel like I can contain the audience. That's the why, why do you do it? Right. Because you know, you can get away with it. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I can, I can uh, imprint this picture on the players at the moment. And if I can't, if I don't feel like that's going, that it's going that direction, then I will absolutely put down a map and absolutely put down minis. Yep. Brian. So you guys, are, you guys are spot on. Um, I guess my only caveat is if you set down miniatures, uh, you are limited to that. If I tell a story your limit is the player's imagination. Yep. All right. And 
I have players who all love very different things. So some of the guys really enjoy combat. Some people really love the map exploration. Um, and, and some of them just are there for the, the, the scare, the story. I'm running Curse of Strahd right now, by the way. So, hmm, Curse of Strahd. So I don't always want to show people everything. Sometimes I want to describe things and have their mind yep. be guessing as to what is happening. So if it's, if it's story-driven or if it's a random encounter that doesn't really matter, then hell, why not, why not just storytell it, right? But yep. if, it, if it's a tactical battle, give them miniatures or put it up on roll 20 or fantasy grounds, you know? Um, yeah. So that's my two cents. I, I try and use both when appropriate. Yep. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a common answer. I, what, what I try and uh, lean away from is the, this or that. I, I completely agree with both of you, but I think it's a combination. Um, Gaming yeah. is an art, not a science, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 We are almost done. So uh, we do have also the, uh, the, the link winners uh, for sharing on social media. I don't know if those individuals are online, but we have a coffee mug going to Ace Ace. I'll give him a second. No, no Ace Ace. I don't know. We have a, uh, we have a um, T-shirt going to Jeremiah Driscoll. Congratulations, Jeremiah. Yeah, right on. Like two minutes ago. <laughs> I'm going to call you JD because it makes me feel like I know you better already. <laughs> and uh, we have a second coffee mug going to Matt Devlin. Matt. Congratulations. We're, we, you can tell we're not used to doing this kind of thing because we're all just like, oh, Matt. Okay, Great, Matt. Bad guy. That, Matt, you won. I want to see him, or at least hear about him, drinking out of the mimic cup, maybe with the yeah, and coffee. It's funny because so it has the it has the, it, it has the tongue. So it does good. The wiggly yeah. tongue. I hear the tongue is popular. Oh, ooh. Mm. so yeah. congrats, congratulations to those if you are the winners and you're online. Uh, Awesome. Thank you for turning in. Thank you for supporting our channel. Uh, if you're not on right now, we will contact you via email. Well, not that you really care because you can't hear this, but uh, we will contact them via email. Daniel, yeah. Let's close yeah. this up. Yeah. So first of all, thanks to everybody who showed up to watch us uh, just genuinely do uh, what I think is uh, – something we love to do, which is talk about gaming, uh, think about all the various ways that these games can be played, types of games that can be played, and all that kind of stuff. You're going to see more of this in the future. We're going to have people more famous than us on, I promise, and they're going to tell you things that they do, and you'll be surprised that many of the things that all these people do are the things that you're already doing. It, it, the, the, it's not rocket science. It really isn't. Everybody can bring their own vibe to this to this to this hobby, and they can bring their own type of game and own interest to this. So I I I'm ex as excited to hear from you all about what you think is important as I am to ever say anything that I think is important. So, um, and uh, uh, we are you can find us first of all you can find us here every other Monday uh, two Mondays from now I have no idea what that date is somebody who's better with a calendar than me let me know 9 p.m. Central CST we're on Facebook uh, we're on uh, we're just kind of starting all these things up we're on Patreon you can find us by searching for Wizards of the Couch you can find us by searching for Couch Wizards Wizards Couch just look for that where is it where am Go I looking at the bottom of the Twitch page under the video feed they oh, will find the okay, social media okay. link buttons all there for what we yeah, I'm got not watching the, I'm not watching the stream so yeah there you go perfect so Jimmy will be our call to action he's our living breathing call to action and uh so Check us out there. We're always chatting there. Uh, I think one of the things that we're going to really try to be is ex as accessible as possible to answer questions. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks, but there'll be other things going on. All of us do actually have interesting things. Praetor's Rejects. Uh, you can find uh, those games coming out on our Wizards of the Couch channel. Uh, check out TPK, TPK Games. Lots of cool stuff there. And uh, at con as far as conventions go, you just missed Cobalt Con. Don't miss it next year. But you will see us some variation of this group at Gen Con. We'll be at Game Hole Con. We'll be at Carry Con. We're going to show up at all those places too. Uh, anything else, guys? Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. please reach out to us on social media. You know what? If you have a great idea or a great question, hit us up. 
um, chances are good. If we, if we think it's great, we'll probably talk about it online and yep. we'll make sure that you get the shout out for it. Absolutely. And of course, you know, if you want to help continue to make all of this possible, please support us. Um, tell your friends, even if, even if you can't pay, you know, or support us on Patreon, share, share our links, you know, help other people learn about our show. Because our goal is just to help people, you know. So programming, I want to make. I'm going to put a couple of posts out on Facebook because yes, Praetors Reject. Because we're going to bring a couple of shows to the channel. We're going to have an industry game. We're going to have a sub game or partner, you know, Patreon game. And then I want to put together uh, for the viewers. We're going to run something Thursday or Friday night. I'm going to post it on Facebook and get some feedback for everybody of what those sessions will be. And we'll and see Beth, what everybody wants uh, to do. Beth yeah, Beth Damus definitely said she would be on video, on beer with beer, on beer with with beer, with beer. She will bring beer. <laughs> yeah, that was actually that was the reaction I was waiting for. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh, no wonder that guy got censored. Yeah. Chuck Wright. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to have some sort of ad policy at this point. You know, ruthless self promotion is reserved just for the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay well hey everybody out there all our mimics out there please like share distribute tell people what uh ridiculousness is happening here on twitch.tv wizard of the couch two weeks from now 9 p.m central standard twitch.tv wizard of the couch and we are out. later folks